We live in Jakarta, a fast-paced metropolitan city with over 10 million people living in it. However, if you take a 1-2 to two hour car ride just outside of Jakarta, you will arrive in Bintaro, a seemingly near place but contain a different set of species, plants and animals from Jakarta. Want to go even farther? Try Bandung, Yogyakarta, Surabaya. These places are near each other, they're even on the same island but they contain a different array of plants and animals and living things. Why is that? Well, it's because of ecosystems, and more importantly, ecology. by definition is the community of living things and the abiotic factors found in a particular place such as a woodland or a pond. However, in ecology is the study of living things and their environment, kind of like the relationship they have with each other and why they're different from each other, why different regions and different areas have different animals or different plants. This can be traced back to 250 years ago with Alexander von Humboldt. He was a German explorer that made many journeys and from the journeys that he went and the cruises he took and the data he collected, he noticed that the number of species living in a place increased as he moved from the north to the tropics. The idea of a different worldwide habitats began to form and that was based on what he saw and observed. Then Philip Sclater, in the 1800s, he found out and looked into it more. He was an English biologist and he looked at the distribution of songbirds, such as the sparrow, around the world and decided that the earth could be divided up into regions based on the birds found there. These regions were known as biogeographical realms. You can find them on a map. Then, Alfred Russell Wallace continued Sclater's observations and studies of it widely and found that the other animals he had seen also fitted into Sclater's system of realms. The system continued to be developed and a modified version of it is still used today. While the ideas of realms continue to develop, a German zoologist called Karl Möbius during the same time investigated oyster banks on the German coastline to see how they may be farmed. From the results of these investigations, he showed how living things interact with each other in their community, which is technically what ecology is today. The idea of interaction gathered pace, and Ernst Haeckel, a German biologist, devised the word ecology in the 1860s to describe the relationships between animals, other living things in the environment, and the features of the environment, such as the weather and the type of soil. In the following decades, interest in such relationships gradually grew, and by the beginning of the 20th century, ecology was established as a science. Food chains are a big part of ecosystems, and they are the eating and feeding relationship between living things and environment. We humans are also part of the food chain. Before stating the examples of food chains, there are some terms that should be learned for learning about food chains. Some of them are herbivores, which are animals that only eat plants, Carnivores, which are animals that only eat other animals, and omnivores are animals that eat both plants and animals. Predators are animals that feed on prey. Prey are animals that is eaten by or falls prey to a predator. Producer are an organism that produce, produces food at the beginning of a food chain. Consumer is an animal that eat plants, other animals, or both plants. Primary consumer is an animal that eats plants. Secondary consumers are animals that eat primary consumers, while tertiary consumers are animals uh, that eat secondary consumers. Quaternary consumers uh, are animals that eat tertiary, the tertiary consumer, and the top carnivore, the, which is the animal at the end of the food chain. Now on to the examples of the food chains itself. 
First, the grasshopper will eat the grass, and then the frog will eat the grasshopper, and then the snake will eat the frog, and lastly, the eagle will eat the snake. These food chains differ from habitat to habitat as they contain different animals and plants residing in them. We humans are also a part of the food chain as we remain the top carnivore if you were to extend the feeding relationship. With food chains, you are also able to find food webs, which are just basically food chains linked together and usually describes the feeding relationship within the habitat. This contains its extensions like us humans and even bacteria.